Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I am Weasel. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Alien vs Predator, which came out in 2004 from writer, director, Paul W.S. Anderson. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Alien vs Predator? Well, the story starts with a group of scientists finding a heat signature in the Antarctic. They send an explorer team there and they uncover a Mayan Aztecian temple underneath the ice. This temple is the kind of hunting ground for the predators and the predators have unleashed some facehuggers into the explorers. But the xenomorphs start to break free and the predators and the humans have to work together if anybody is going to survive. This film had been in sort of pre-production for about 14 years before it eventually came to cinema screens. Of course, everybody knows right now that Predator 2 sparked the idea of merging these two franchises together. Where at the end of the movie, Danny Glover's character spots an alien skull on the Predator ship as a trophy. Yeah. And so every single fan watching the movie got super excited about the concept of merging these two together in a versus battle. Fox Studios also was very excited at the idea and immediately started pre-production on what could be an Alien vs Predator film. However, the scripts were thrown around, ideas were gestated and then soon forgotten about. They couldn't decide on which direction to take it in. But of course, that didn't stop every other media outlet producing and experimenting with Alien vs. Predators. We had video games. We also have comic books, toys, figures, the list, the trading cards, everything that you could think of, yeah. Alien vs. Predator related, except for a movie. Of course, Alien 3 was also in development at this time, and Sigourney Weaver was even approached hey, would you be interested in Alien vs. Predator? And she just said, God, no. <laughs> the idea of the film alone sounds absolutely awful. So much so, uh, kill my character, please. Kill me now. <laughs> kill me now. So, eventually, James Cameron and Ridley Scott both came up with the idea of what they would like to do for a new Alien movie. <laughs> how to continue the franchise forward. And they gave scripts into 20th Century Fox. And they were like, yeah, how, how much is this going to cost, Mr. Cameron? Millions and billions! <laughs> because we're going to have to pay both Ridley Scott, Sigourney Weaver, and James Cameron. And 20th Century Fox kind of shit a brick and decided, <laughs> you know what? This guy over here who just made Mortal Kombat, let's give him the reins to Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> Sorry. And this film is pretty much just an adaptation of the book, Alien vs. Predator Prey. If you've read the book, which I have, the predators have dropped a bunch of eggs onto this inhospitable alien planet and the humans that are already living there come into contact with the aliens and they get obviously chest bursted. The predators come down, a few predators get killed, there's a whole war going on. But you have the main characters of Broken Tusk, who's the elder predator of the group, and I think her name's... Uh, Mich Michoki, or, or she has some kind of Japanese name, um, who's in charge of the human colony. And so this is what this film basically just adapts. They just change the alien planet to the Antarctic, they cut the number of predators down, and they just force this kind of woman in front. You know, they're like, look, here is your new Ripley character. And you're like, yeah, but she ain't Ripley. So yeah, this film was given a $50 million budget, which is really, really low. Which meant we get a bunch of actors with faces that you probably won't recognize, or were pretty much just desperate for work at this time. Not only that, they also decided to shoot in Prague, just also to reduce the amount of budget they would need. Yeah. Thankfully, just from the outset of looking at this film, the sets do look pretty damn good. Yeah. Unfortunately, the characters that are in this set are absolutely bland. They might as well just be cardboard cutouts of characters from better films. Yeah, I, I, I will go on. I, I will back that one up as well. The, the, the main woman, Sane Lathan, who plays Alexa, uh, her, her opening scene, I was 
just straight away, I was just frustrated yeah. at the stupidity of the character. Because not only is she climbing up this ice glacier and doesn't actually look authentically like she's even there. Yeah. She's kind of looks like she's levitating or just hanging there, despite the fact that she's only on with these few hooks. And stupidly, she's left her mobile phone on her, which somehow manages to get a reception, <laughs> and it makes her jump. And I'm like, that core could have killed you. How stupid are you? Well, she's, and then, she's an experienced mountain climber, isn't she? I'm it sure still freaks her out. Time. She still almost dies. Which was taking that phone call. She's not expected to get a phone call. Everybody else knows that. Well, then why did she leave her phone on? Just in case she needs to call somebody. And not only that, she takes the time to plug her ear thing into her ear. (laughs) Hello. Miss Woods. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Who is this? And then not only that, she climbs up a little bit further, and I got annoyed straight away again because the douchebag that called her has stood there. And it's like, you couldn't have just waited two minutes then for her to finish climbing up? You had to call her now? And how did they manage to land the helicopter up there without her even noticing? (laughs) I come from the south. This is two minutes into the film. <laughs> uh, there's like a hundred different problems already. Oh, I want to I bring up <laughs> Raul Bova, the, the, the Spanish archaeologist. I mean, you, you kind of hate the female character. I hate this male character. He's just so predictably fucking weak. This guy was definitely just given the script. Oh, yeah. So that he could go, right, they, that's... Yeah, they right. walked down the street. They were like, we need another male actor. And, uh, you you doing anything today? No? Okay, read the script. Right, yeah, okay. Here's a here's a, here's a a Coke lid, right? And just pretend that you're an archaeologist. And he's like, oh, see, si, see, si, I understand Mayan, Mayan hieroglyphics. I am like the smartest person. You know, me and this girl, we're going to f- uncover everything. And you're just like, oh, these fucking characters, really? When I was a kid growing up in Italy... You know what they call a moon that big? Hmm. Hunter's moon. <laughs> the film's called Alien vs. Predator. And we ain't got no Alien vs. Predators yet. Well, in the extended director's cut, there is yeah. like, there's a quick clip at the beginning of some um, whaler running around the station yes. being hunted by a predator and an alien pounces out, which lasts, you know, like 20 seconds. Yeah, that would, I mean, I think, obviously, they, they must have taken it out to try and build up the suspense. But, yeah, it's kind of like the saving grace of having the DVD is that you get that little bit and you're like, yeah, well, People went into this film already knowing what they were going to get. Yeah. So, hey man, don't argue with me. We're talking about 20th Century Fox here. We already know the fucking shit they already did with Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3. You know, how do we expect them to ever even let anybody get what they want from Alien vs. Predator? You know, they well, look at... This what... brings me to the next big issue that I have with the film is that it's a... I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to try not to swear as much as possible, but oh, they God. decided <laughs> to make it a PG-13 movie. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's just have a look at Alien chestburster sequence gory and violent let's have a look at predator we've got arms being taken off we've got chest cavities and heads exploding we've got people being skinned alive and now we take these two same creatures and put them in a movie together you expect it to be ultra violent no we're going to make this as child friendly as possible so we can maximize profits we are making this movie to make money because yeah. we do not care about the fans. That is exactly what this film is telling me 10, 15 minutes into it. See, but at the same time, in defense, we say we say whoever was behind this was trying to maximize, maximize profits. So I pass the buck to 20th Century Fox. You know, I would love to sit here and fucking rape Paul W. Anderson, but he's only the director. Yes, and then as a director, he had a lot of control because not only did he take the film outside of Hollywood and go, I'm going to go to Prague and get the hell away from 20th Century Fox, he wrote the script and he also directed the movie. So there is no excuse for the the, uh, the continuity areas with the other franchises with some of the stupid mistakes he makes in this film. Because in interviews, Paul W. Anderson says that he is a huge fan of both the Alien and Predator movies. Yet when you watch this film, you really wouldn't think so. But at the same time, you know... He could. He constructed. The, he constructed this film, but he's all. He's got to. He's got to answer to somebody a higher above him, and they're the ones on his back saying, "We want fucking shitloads of money." 
You know, we know that the other films make so much money when the fans come rushing to the cinema to watch this, even though we're, as 20th Century Fox, are the people who put our noses in and almost force most of these movies to crash. We already know the backstory with David Fincher. You know, the problems that Josh Whedon had with Resurrection. You know, the shit Cameron had to go through with Aliens. And he only got, a, he only got allowed to do that because he'd already given them Terminator. You know? And obviously, let's not even get started on Ridley Scott, who obviously went off to Prometheus, which I... Just, just not that. <laughs> but getting back to AVP, obviously, you know, the, we've we've established our, our our two kind of lead characters. Wait a minute. We call these characters now. I just want to put this as a test to yeah. those of you at home. Yeah. How many how many characters can you remember their names for from any of the Alien movies right now? You can list off probably the entire cast from Alien. You can probably list off every single character from Aliens, including the Whalen yutani board members. Yeah, yeah. Van how, Leeuwen. <laughs> how many characters right now can you name from Alien vs. Predator? One. Just one. I can name one. How many can you guys remember? Probably none. Don't Be Google it. Don't, don't oh, Google oh, sorry. It. Maybe, maybe just one. Charles Bishop Wayland. Yeah. Now, let's get into that, shall we? Wayland, or Bishop rather, was first introduced to us as an android in Aliens. Yeah. Now, what this movie is doing is essentially going, this is the owner of the company, the founder of the company. This is Charles Bishop Wayland. Yeah. And so, what he's suggesting here is that uh, this is the guy who would make the Bishop androids yeah, yeah. in his image. Yeah. So, why the hell in Aliens would Ripley not recognize his face? This guy is a national celebrity. He's had a company that's existed for hundreds of years. Uh, <clears throat> his face would have been everywhere. Everyone would recognize not him. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, obviously, because from what this film tells us is that he's alive in 2004. This Charles Wayland, the head of the company, who is dying yes. in this movie, is, is alive at this point in 2004. Yes. Now, it would be really strange Stupid of anybody to be the face of a company for 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 over two hundred years because people would be like, hold on a minute, how are you still alive? Well, no, he's also he's not. It's also the... take into account Ash in Alien is an android and of the same model of system. Well, not of the same model system, but built from the same company as Bishop and looks nothing like Bishop. No, there was a lot of competing companies outside of. No, 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 no. Ash is of the model of. Bishop from Aliens. Even even Bishop brings it up in Aliens. He's like, oh, the the, the you know the, that series was always twitchy. Yes, okay, it's fifty seven years later after the Ash model, so maybe they thought, oh, hold on a minute, we're, we're going to modify that one. But I understand your point of you know why the fuck would Paul Anderson do that and say, look, hey, look, here's Lance Henriksen. Exactly. You remember they, him? <laughs> they that was literally it. They just wanted to shoehorn in Lance Henriksen because he was a recognizable face from at least two of the Alien movies. But then at the same time, if you look at Lance Henriksen's filmography, he would have probably have signed up for this film even if it had nothing to do. That's so sad. <laughs> it is so sad because Lance Henriksen deserved a better film career. Yeah, he's an amazing actor. He can make shit movies enjoyable. I saw a Nazi film with him in that he was literally in for like 10 minutes. His 10 minutes was like the best fucking bit of this whole Nazi movie. But I still fucking watched the whole movie just for Lance <laughs> Henriksen. <laughs> I'll turn your back on me. There is at least the the first nod to to him as Bishop as the android. I mean, it gives you the warm fuzzy feelings as a fan when you see him at his desk with his pen, just mocking the game that he would play in Aliens. Yeah, You're just like yeah, doth cap there. But it's just it was just such a waste. It's such a wasted character because not only do we know get to find out who this originator is of this company. But he has very little to no character development in the film other than the fact that he's dying and he wants to achieve something of, to make sure his legacy would live on forever. And he has perhaps one other scene of significant importance where he's talking to Lex about how perhaps, you know, share prices would drop after he passes. And it's just like, and that's about as much character development as he gets. Yeah, but as a fan of the series, I reckon Wayland, the character of Wayland from this film, has been following the 
predator tribe since well, the, the predator species since it went into the jungle in Colombia. You know, I reckon he's been, you know, it doesn't tell us this. This is what I assume as a fan because, you know, I, well, as, a, as a fan. Right now, I'm just going to say, uh, as a fan, the Alien vs. Predator franchise exists in an alternate dimension to <laughs> the Alien franchise and the Predator franchise. They both exist in their own dimensions. To, to you, they do. To, to yes, me, they do. To me, I spend long this, hours trying to construct them all together, so at least they it's try It's too painful to sense. do it. Well, it because it, especially if fun. you want to throw it's Prometheus fun. into the mix, oh, we look yeah, at Wayland from there. It, it, it technically makes sense. But it, <laughs> it, it, it technically, technically makes sense, but I can't go into it now. It's such okay? a convoluted attempt. We'll save that for the Prometheus review. We'll just save that for... At the same time, like we say, again, back to this movie, Charles Wayland has got these two fucking main characters together, Alexa and Sebastian. That's what their names, if you were looking it up, Alexa and Sebastian. And he pulls this group together. You've got a bunch of scientists who, you know, have no idea where they're going into, but are so excited about working with Mr. Wayland. And a bunch of guys who have no idea what they're getting into, yeah, but we... you can tell are fucking mercenaries. <laughs> they're, just, they're just, I mean, one of them, is played by the guy who played Chibs uh, in Sons of Anarchy. And this guy has two notable scars running up his cheeks. Those are real scars. He did get a, a, a Glasgow and Smile, I think it was, when he was younger. But when you see a guy like that with two fucking scars running up his face, you don't think, oh, geologist. <laughs> <laughs> you think, that's a badass fucking mercenary there. You <laughs> could the, fucking kill me. In his first introductory character trait is to start screaming <laughs> at random civilians. And you're just like, who are these douchebags? <laughs> yeah, Why are they I, coming along? There's one, thing, there's one thing I did hate about that one character was that he just screams all the way through this film. Get off. We've been wearing your ass for a hat. <laughs> No! No! Get me out of here! It's okay! Behind him! No! All the way, all the way through the film, up until, up until he gets face huggered. He's screaming. But then I look, like the fact that we get introduced to so much cannon fodder. It's like, hey, who are all these guys? Oh, uh, they are the world's greatest drillers. <laughs> That's all we're told. Because the next time we see these characters, they're being hunted and flayed by a freaking predator. <laughs> which which is cool. I get excited with I get I get excited with that. But because it's PG twelve predator because not only because we see these guys after they've been thrown around and the predator shot them and chased them around and impaled them. And then they're hanging upside down. Yeah, he hasn't had to, yeah but they, they, they're not the target. I do love the build-up to those. Even though the Predator suits are bad. Well, it's one actor, I believe, Ian White, who, would play, who does go on to play all three Predators in this movie and would continue to play the Predator into the sequel. Yeah. But the fact is you have that first guy with the, the, the kind of strangely adapted mask. He just looks like a beefcake. And I'm like, I, why? In the first Predator, in Predator 2, the Predator is tall and slim and agile looking. Kevin, ones, Kevin Peter Hall. Kevin though. Peter Hall, exactly. Whereas these Predators look like, they look like wrestlers. They look like, they look like rugby players. They're yeah. kind of squatted down and, and bulky. Yeah, they just don't have the presence that Kevin Peter Hall had. But I, I always just love the Predator design. You know, yes, I always, yeah. uh, you know, I look, I look past the guy in the suit at the actual design and the detail that they put in, it, it's pretty damn good. It could have been a hell of a lot better compared to, say, Predator and Predator 2. And if you look further on with, with uh, Nimrod Anto's Predators, you know, the, the level of detail in those suits are pretty amazing. And these ones, they're a bit beefcake-ish, but the, the detail with the ship coming in. You know, being all, all stealthy, a ship that large, making no sound as it passes over the men. Fucking love that shot. The three drop pods being chucked out. The Predators escape. Oh, as I say, escape. They, they, they get let, let out onto this Razor back point whaling station. And I do love the fact that the, the Predators have already fired the plasma into the ice to make this big tunnel. But, just like you said... The stupidity of Paul W.S. Anderson is like, you know, this is Cinema 101. I need to lead you by hand through the film 
and then leave you at certain points and call the security guards to come and find you because they come across the fucking hole in the ice and Waylon goes, if you look, this wasn't here yesterday and now it is here, but it's not here, but it is here. Who, do, who managed to shoot this all the way through the ice? I've never seen anything like it. I'm telling you, there's no team and no machine in the world that could cut to this depth in 24 hours. They go down the tunnel, you know? They go down this huge, massive fucking tunnel that nobody on Earth would have had the time to drill through. And they get to the bottom and go, oh, there's no drilling equipment or human presence here. Isn't that strange? I don't understand it. No equipment. No sign of another team. <sighs> well, that tunnel didn't dig itself. What the fuck? You just, you just said that at the top of the fucking tunnel. You just said nobody could have fucking done this. And yet you're still looking for evidence of humans at the bottom of it? And this guy was the, is the founder of one of the most <laughs> successful companies in this, in this entire universe. Maybe he got smarter once he got the technology. But he dies. <laughs> Careful, they bite. Let's just get into the fucking meat of this story. We're following these stupid people through this temple. They, they come across the sacrificial chamber and, you know, like I said, Cinema 101, they go, Hey, you guys that none of, that we know none of your names, you wait here <laughs> in this death room, okay? We're going to go off to the other room that has the switch that activates this room. <laughs> this just the sheer stupidity of why Waylon would choose to take a bunch of grunts <laughs> idiotic grunts with him on a scientific uh, you know uh, exploration of this of this tomb temple, yeah. of this temple and so the sarcophagus opens up and we get this smooth layer of mist across the top which slowly dissipates and we are revealed three alien sort of shoulder mounted Pre guns yeah? predator plasma casters well predators are aliens in a way yeah technically um and so the scientists are like wow this is like finding moses's dvd collection <laughs> it's a good thing we brought the experts well, yeah, it is a good thing. Because this is like finding Moses' DVD collection. And so they're like, wow, okay, we don't know what it is. We don't know what it does. And the grunts are like, let's take them. <laughs> yes, let's take them. And the scientists are like, no, don't touch it. We don't know it. Too fucking late. You just let the grunts take them out anyway. Because Waylon was like, we're taking them with us. How? Well, you do not listen to your science team at no. all? Why bring them then? I mean, all he serves as a purpose is to go, my family. My family. <laughs> I have a family. I have a family. I'm not fodder because I have a family. They're not going to kill me off because that would leave these two beautiful boys orphans. No, you're fucking dead, mate. I love the fact that it's the, it's, it's the fact that he's got all these science, he's got these explorers who, who, you know, who know temples. Yeah. You know, they've been in temples. They've seen these things. So... I've never been in a temple before. I, I don't ever say that I am an archaeologist, but I've seen enough fucking Indiana Jones movies and shit to understand that they put traps in these temples to stop people from getting in. But once they come across, once Waylon and his team come across this temple, they walk in and step on a fucking trap. And I'm like, <laughs> why did you do that for? Oh, because we needed to do that so that the alien queen would come out of the cryogenics. Yes, the predators have an alien queen stored in ice at the bottom of this temple. I'm like, that's, that's, that's harsh. That's, that's gonna really piss her off. <laughs> And then the alien queen comes out and they force her, they, they send electrical surges through her to make her start making these eggs. Now, 2004, the special effects for this egg, the queen always looks nice. Yeah. Always, always looks nice. I even like the opening shot of the movie with that satellite that kind of looks like the alien queen. But the, like I said, the alien queen looks pretty sweet, but the actual egg laying thing from her ass just looks so small. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, you know, I know that the, 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 the puppet effects are usually generally small, 
but there's a way that you can film it that makes it look fucking awesome. This one just looks really, really small, and I just can never get past it. The face suckers are, the eggs are moved to the sacrificial chamber. The mercs, who are just after money, you know, are take the guns. The predators are like, oh my god, guys, look! They've got our guns. We need to go quickly before, you know, the, the face huggers get out. And the predators manage to run all the way to where the people are. In like the quickest time ever. Even though the temple's moving around now. How the fuck? They, ma they must know all the back exits and shit like that. I don't think they've ever been there before, but they do now <laughs> yeah. have, you know, before their, 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 you know, their, their wrist computer or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, it used to like give power readings and whatnot, but now it gives full 3D holographic sort of <laughs> yeah. mapping. So it's like, okay. It's like an eye watch. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and the face huggers are unleashed onto the unsuspecting cannon fodder. I mean, I liked that blonde girl because she had oh, at she least one. She, she was hot. She, she's hot, and she, she hot. had like one interesting line about why she keeps a firearm with her. Yeah, and it's like great. So I'm expecting her to at least put nope. She got grabbed by the face hugger straight away after a really crappy slow mo, you know, fucking post matrix shot. <laughs> face huggers flying around and instantly encasing everyone. They try to balance CGI with puppetry effects definitely and you get points for effort there yeah you you don't do as well as some other better directors out there for example ridley scott and james cameron if they had been in charge of the puppetry and cgi effects this film would have been fucking glorious to watch but but it's not it's paul w anderson you know he's working on a minuscule budget he's probably not got the world's greatest team he certainly doesn't have stan winston's monster magic certainly behind him so you know when you see like i said when i see the puppet effect of the tiny queen egg laying ass i'm kind of like meh but then when i see the cgi of the face ogre leaping i'm like that is cool that's the first time i've ever seen that thing you know it's not brilliant but it does flow quite well it lands the face like lands on her face she's completely shocked that people are now fucking gestated uh, in, impregnated and the aliens are gonna start bursting free there's a lot of shit on the internet about the time it takes for a fucking fate a chest burster to break out exactly because we are uber fans of the alien franchise you know in the first alien movie the after the face hugger, the face hugger when it gets on his face takes it takes hours. It takes almost a day a even to day. impregnate him. After the after the figures come off and died, it's almost another whole day before the chest burster is actually ready to 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 make its presence known. Yeah. Yet we now have Alien vs Predator, where it takes less than five minutes for a face hugger to impregnate someone, for the alien to burst out and be fully grown. Not only this, though. <laughs> I have a problem with the alien queen in this film. Right. That it goes, right, you know what? I've been trapped here, say, 500 years. Yeah. How about how about now I tell the aliens to come and help me get free? Maybe she has done it constantly over loads of times, but the predators has all, have always prevented them. And how do we know that the alien queen hasn't escaped before, and that's why she's chained up so much and forced into fucking ice? Maybe they had her, had her kept out, and that's why in the flashback you see all these aliens escape because I mean uh, spoilers the fucking Sebastian is reading one of the walls and goes oh yeah you know look if these things ever escape you know they wipe everything out the predators have an immense fucking stockpile of technology but they are honor bound they are honor bound if the aliens ever get loose the predators job is to wipe out all evidence of this ever happening. But, at the same time, they still want to be able to hunt them. Yeah, okay, so you say that these predators are honour-bound. Yeah. Yeah, we are not told it pretty much anything about these predators in this film, other than the fact that they... We, we can only really assume that these are fledgling predators that are, oh, yeah, these are on the right of passage. Yeah, these are kids. These so, are kids ones. they are literally sent in with next to no weaponry. Yeah. Well, well, they're sent in with, like, combi sticks, 
um, net net launchers, net, probably weapons that everything they everything except their shoulder cannon, which is the most OP weapon that they possess, <laughs> practically. Yeah, practically. Yeah. About forty minutes to an hour into the film, we finally, finally get our first alien versus predator encounter. Yeah. And this one singular alien kills the first predator almost instantly after after a, a small scrap sneak attack. A sneak attack. It he impales he him he from behind. He comes up behind. That I I actually really love that bit because for years people would sit there going, "Who would win in a fight between an alien versus and a, and a predator?" And it was always, "All oh, the predator would win." Why? Well, because he's got the weaponry and he's got this and he's got that and the alien's got fuck all. And in this movie, the alien kills him in one hit. And I'm like, "Boom, bitch! That's how you do that." An stupid alien, stupid predator. The, well, no, because playing the 2000 and seven xbox 360 game or play actually playing as a predator in any of the fucking games that have been released you have to switch vision all the time from thermal to alien vision all the time because you cannot see the aliens in thermal and you cannot see the humans in alien in, in alien mode so if he's in thermal vision and he is when he's going for the backpack to get the weapon he could look directly at where the alien would be and he would not be able to see him unless he changed his vision mode. If I was going into an alien infested environment, I think I would keep alien vision mode on pretty much all the time. But then you or would... I would be cycling pretty damn quickly between thermal <laughs> and fucking alien vision. Bit. I love the bit that you got this. That you got this alien. He's just snuck up and you've. He's just killed this predator, and you're just like, okay, sweet. We've just had the. We've just had a, the brief brief interlude, and this one that we 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 no name. He's a no name predator, like the no name humans that walked in. Has just been fucking killed. Uh, and so another predator joins the fight. Yeah, with the, the same alien. The beefcake beefcake predator has the fight with the alien, and when I first watched it. I did enjoy it. I did enjoy this fight sequence because I had never seen anything like this before. I mean, I, I do believe this is probably one of the first versus movies out there. It was it before uh, Freddy versus Jason. I, I can't remember. Um, it's certainly way before Robocop versus Terminator and well before Batman versus Superman. So seeing these two creatures on screen for the first time was a fucking cum fest for me because I've never seen anything like it before. Nowadays, seeing it, what, 12 years later, it is like watching a YouTube video. It is. It just looks like a fan-made video. It because does. Because the camera work is awful. It is so close into the action, you can't really tell what's going on. And when you do get too close, some of the puppets just look really rubbery and fake. Yeah. And, I think and then that... not, not only that, but the fight looks more like a wrestling match. When the Predator hey, picks hey, up hey, the hey. alien... Don't this wrestling. I'm not this in wrestling. I'm saying this looks like a wrestling match where they start performing wrestling moves on each other and the Predator literally picks the alien up and starts whacking it around the, the scenery. For 2004 on a budget, you know, at least he had, he, at least he had something. We'd never seen a predator, uh, an alien get grabbed by the tail and get swung around. If anything, look how brilliant fucking Aliens is by Cameron. We barely get any shots of the alien in those, in those films and they're fucking getting annihilated left and right. At least in this one, we do get shots. Now, we do get shots and, that, and the thing is, the aliens in Alien and Aliens and they look real they look like they're there yeah in alien versus predator with the shot with the alien sat there after having its tail cut off and it stood there and its tail was flicking acid around yeah just look at it yeah it doesn't look right it just it looks too clean and shiny and fake and cheap and it just lessens the experience so much so for it up until the point he kills the predator I 
believe I'm actually going to give some credit to the film, but the the mise en scene, the scenery, the sets are beautiful. They are yeah. fantastic. The shot with the alien mounted on top of the predator, on top of the of the skulls with yeah. the pillars of yeah. the of, of the pyramid there looks awesome. So for a few seconds, it looks like a fantastic screensaver for your computer. Yeah. But then we get back to the stupid retarded characters. Oh, the humans. Yeah. Just. But I, it's gotten to a point now where I, I, I will watch the film, but I really do not give a flying fuck about any of the humans. You're just there to just stay alien. You're just there to just stay aliens for the predators to fight. Well, I mean, that's, nearly that's, all the yeah. human characters have been fodderized already at this point. They've been face good and chest bursted and in, in, yeah. in, in moments. I mean, even even the scene where I mean, the predators are primarily chasing after the humans for their weapons back. If they, if uh, there's no other reason for them, I mean, I do love the fact that yeah, he d- he does follow the lineage of the predators only killing the armed guys. Well, you no, know? because the mining crew up on the surface, no weapons at all. Uh no, 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 no. They all had guns. Okay, what about the guy that's laying in the snow? He's just laying there, just like maybe the predator won't see me because I'm. I'm laying in the snow and they maybe not see my heat vision. One predator walks past and the other one just goes, I see you, you're dead. Yeah, that he, guy, unarmed. No, he, he 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 was armed at the top. Mm, yeah, but not when he was laying in the snow. Oh, he no, was, no, no. But he was, he was, he was, he would still be tr- countered as a, as a, as a combat trophy. If you are part of a species or a tribe that is supposed to be stealthing around, would you leave this person alive? You're an honor bound predator. You've just come across a guy with a gun. You've you, you're fighting him. He escapes, loses his weapon, and then you're just going to look at him and go, mm, no, no. You're gonna you're gonna be like, Psh, you put up a good fight, mate, but I'm still taking you as a trophy. <laughs> they should have just killed that guy up the top. They should have just speared him. But they, they you know they wanted to elongate the scene a bit. By making him slide down the tunnel and how cool that ride looks, Yay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but ultimately, it's the, it's the, it comes along the same line with with what happens to Wayland. Wayland comes up against one of these predators. You know, he's got the weapon. Uh, he gives the weapon to to Alexa, and the predator lifts him up, and you know, it's it's about two seconds away from killing him, and then looks at him and goes, "You are fucking dead anyway." You know, because he sees the cancer inside him, and is just like. There is no point in me wasting my time killing you. It'd be a, it would be a dishonorable kill. He only kills Wayland when Wayland says, "I'll turn your back on me." And it does no damage, and the humans manage to run off, and they the the predator and the humans are separated. But it comes to a stupid bit for me as a as a predator fan is that an alien sneaks down towards this predator and he fucking slices its face off and a fucking face hugger leaps at him and he fucking cuts in half with his boomerang and he starts marking himself which is cool I'm, I'm, I'm exactly I'm like how stupid is the predator he's like I'm in an alien environment you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my helmet off well in the book he in the in he the was law, just attacked by a face they, they, they have to mark them they have to mark themselves before the acid has no effect Bishop in Aliens tells you that the acid oxidizes once it reaches, once it comes into contact with the air. The molecular acid oxidizes after the creature's death, completely neutralizing. Bishop, you know that's very interesting, but it doesn't really get us anywhere, does it? So it becomes right. no effect. So if he doesn't, if he doesn't mark himself now, he'll have no evidence to show his tribe that he has managed to kill xenomorphs. But while he's taking off his mask, a face hugger sneaks down and leaps onto the face. Now I'm like, okay, I'm a fan. When a face hugger lands on a predator, you get a predator alien. You don't get a predator alien in this film. Basically, the predator fucking wakes up. He wakes up. Now, in I understand that every time somebody gets face huggered, unless they're encased in the hive wall, they have no memory of being face huggered. Going all the way back to Kane in the first movie, yeah. you wake up and you have a dream of smothering. But the predator... Should because the corpse of the face of is right there. fucking right there. The predator is like, right, I sliced that one in half and I killed that alien and that guy must have just, I must, I must have killed him. I must kill. I'm just gonna take that kill. 
I'm just, I'm just going to take that kill. And again, <laughs> oh, this, a bit coffee. But again, the face are going on his face and off again within less than a few minutes. Because we can tell every ten minutes within this film because the pyramid changes. Yeah. Which again, I don't want to get into the whole metric system of time with the with the archaeologist calculations of when it changes because ten minutes is it's by the by the multiplication of ten when it's supposed to be every hundred years and oh I've gone but cross time eyes. is by sixty seconds to to. A drip, a drip. <laughs> Uh, right, right, yeah. right. Just but make it easy for the audience. Yeah, just make it easy for the audience. We need to speed. We need to speed things along. We need to get the the big final ending. Sebastian gets captured by the aliens. Did not see that bit happening with the whole jumping across the bridge bit. And we have the female lead, like I said, forced into us as this main character, like from the book. And this is the bit that really, really pissed me off. Right, was that. This female character yep. is having to fight. Is going about to fight an alien, and she kills it with a pointy stick. Well, she doesn't really fight it, does she? She she just just stabs it. She's like, there we go, Wait, killed she, an alien. She barrels herself into a corner and grabs the first thing she can. <sighs> She had to establish herself as this honourable thing because now the predator gets to look at her and go, You killed an alien. I killed an alien. We gotta be buddies. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Like I said, with her being kind of an adaptation of the female character from Alien vs. Predator, Prey, you know, like I said, Broken Tusk and, and Magushi, I, I really can't remember her fucking name, they, they became buddies after... They became buddies after she helped him. And this is what they did with this film. They were basically like, oh, hey, all of you who've read this book and know the lore, you see? You see, she's just like this character. And I'm like, yes, we knew that from the fucking beginning of the film. It's not what we wanted. We know she's going to get marked with acid later on and be part of the clan. And, oh, maybe she goes off with them and does what the girl does in the comic books. Maybe she just gets left out on the fucking ice. In the middle of nowhere, with nothing to help her. Woohoo! Instead, like I said, the alien queen decides then she's going to come up with the great idea, finally, of getting all the aliens to spit acid on her chains and escape. The CGI looks alright, but I always have an issue with the differing height of the alien queen. You know? Yeah, she... yeah. I mean, it goes from puppet to the superimposed puppet to the CGI queen. And it goes so, know... and it goes so quickly, you can't fully tell how big she is because not at one point is, is she actually standing no, for a because full height. The, the, the biggest giveaway for me is when the queen literally is stood there and she falls and flops over into a building and it's like, well, she's the size of the house. Like, that's, and, yeah, and, and well, I saw that building. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really call that a thing a building a, or a, a shed or whatever. Yeah, it is. it's it's kind of like a large. The kind scale of, like a barn. of it just looks so wrong. But like it, 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 it gets, it gets worse. It get, it gets worse. I mean, we're 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 wanting to we're wanting to enjoy it because it's got aliens and predators in. But not only do you get the fucking escape. I mean, the predator has created weapons for. For our main ca character, you know, which is kind of cool, but she doesn't ever fucking use them. I hate it when they do that. Yeah. I hate it when they. Spend... Oh well, she kind of does because she uses the same stick to go and stab the alien queen. I'm like, yeah, you know what, Ripley? You don't need a power loader. Just grab a big pointy stick. <laughs> yeah. When they run to the exit, they run to the exit and they set up this fucking shitty ass sleigh ride and she does the you are one ugly mother oh we can't say fucker in this film so they cut it off the the predator and this girl jump on the sleigh ride the sleigh ride goes flying out because the predator has explained to us that he's got one of these it's a bomb and he's dropped one of them into the fucking hive they 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 do a slow motion run a slow motion run in a fucking alien I just planet. can't believe I'm seeing yeah, it why? I can't believe it why it's not even like it's fucking bullet time running they just fucking took 
Sylvester Stallone's slow motion run and applied it to a predator and a female. You know, there's the whole dramatic music, which is nowhere as good as James Horner's music from Aliens at all, ever. You know, the whole place collapses and you're like, is it over? The predator takes his mask off. And for 2004, I did think it looked kind of cool, but I still prefer the original yeah. ones from Predator and Predator 2. They just yeah. look so much more... These ones fucking... look like, like... They look like masks. They yeah, look they, like... they look like masks. It, it reminds me again with Predators, with the Berserker Predator and that. It just doesn't look right. Especially when... Especially when the Alien Queen pops out and the Predator does a wow face. Like, wow, look, I did not realise she's still alive. I'm like, stupid. Really? The whole final fight sequence is, is is pretty cool. I kind of enjoy that. You know, the 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 predator is 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 trying to kill this fucking queen. And like I said, based on the book, you know, there's a whole fucking predator human alien queen fight from there. And you know, you get a nod to that. I always like the scene where he stabs the fucking alien queen in the side of the head with a sharp pointy stick, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then he gets he gets killed. She gets the well, queen gets she get, he the gets ice. impaled, and they they quickly tie the queen up to a chain, and then kick this thing over into the ice, and the queen is dragged to the bottom of the uh, Arctic Ocean. Yeah, which I'm assuming which I'm guessing is not going to kill her anyway, because yeah. we've already seen her frozen for five hundred years. And they so, can pretty much survive so like in I'm space. Saying, she's just going to be sat at the bottom of the Arctic now indefinitely until global warming. Fuck. <laughs> I have a few favourite scenes in this film. I mean, they're just... It's, it's just pretty easy. They're all the pretty much the alien and predator stuff. I like, I like the predator ship flying over shot. You know, it's kind of... You know, hey, stealthy, we're just going to drop in. You're never even going to notice to sit there. I like I like the, the predator ambushes and the alien ambushes and, and the fight sequences with them. I, I particularly like the nod with the, uh, the black guy, Max, uh, being netted. You know, it kind of, it's a bit of a nod to his his other appearance in, in Resident Evil where he gets turned into pedigree chum. Um, I like the Predator backstory, you know, like I said, it kind of eases people in to say, hey, look, these guys have been coming here for fucking years. And I like the Alien Queen fight. It's probably the first and only time I will ever see a Predator and an Alien Queen fight on screen. I don't have many favourite scenes in the film at all. I like the subtle nods to the other Alien films. Yeah. I like Lance Henriksen with the pen at his desk. Yeah. I like the uh, uh, the lights blinking on the Predator masks, which yeah. just kind of reminds you of Alien, the Nostromo, uh, for, you know, the opening sequence. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the fact that the sacrificial chamber is sort of in a similar setup to Aliens cryo chamber where they all wake up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I like these little subtle nods to the other films. Um, as an actual favourite scene in the film, I've got to say I liked the nethead alien. I liked I liked the fact that if you're a fan of Aliens and and you wanted to see who would win an Alien versus Predator mashup, this film tells you Aliens win. Because what a single alien manages to dispatch two predators and a face hugger manages to jump on the other predator in a space of ten minutes. <laughs> Who wins? <laughs> Aliens do. And as a, as a, I am more of an alien fan than I am a predator fan, I was kind of I was kind of glad that that settled the argument for me. Uh, so as a favorite scene, it's got to be the the few instances where aliens and predators do fight in the film. I cannot recommend Alien vs Predator not even as a curiosity thing because there is much better material out there the Alien films and the Predator films just go and re-watch those because this film gives you nothing new other than what your imagination hasn't already conceived with the idea of having these two verse each other perhaps if this film had quadruple its budget a competent film director and a decent writer, it could have become something special. It could have actually made you could have made Sigourney Weaver eat her words and actually give the fans something that we wanted instead of this PG half ass nonsense that was made just to get some money. And not only that, this film had did earn more money 
in de- as as a whole than any of the other Alien or Predator movies alone. Oh, shit. I I I don't recommend Alien vs Predator. If you are a fan of the Alien or Predator series, you've already seen this film and you already have made up your mind about it. I am a fan of the the series and I do enjoy watching this one and its sequel every now and again just because there are no, there, there, there's nothing else out there. I can understand guilty pleasures. Yo, no, I really do. Yeah, nobody nobody else has actually as big as we like to big up Ridley Scott and James Cameron, they still haven't got the nutsack to actually turn around and say we're going to do this on our own. You know, a lot of actual directors have actually gone out and done the and done films on their own back, on their own budget, put themselves into bankruptcy and put something competent out there that people actually enjoy. Paul W.S. Anderson was making a name for himself. He got given a script and a shitload of money and tried his best, I suppose you could say, to, to try and make this film. This film is for those people who do not know anything about aliens and do not know anything about predators. It's for those people who sit there and there are, and there are people like this out there who go, I'm not watching that, it looks boring. And they say that to the Alien films and the Predator films. Alien vs Predator are for those people so that you can sit them down and go, watch this, you'll understand it. And it's half the running time of any of those other movies. And not only that, this film was padded out with 15 minutes of end credits. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, those kind of people will enjoy Alien vs Predator. And then then you have converted somebody to go back and watch the better movies, the Alien franchise and the Predator franchise. If you're not, if you are a fan, like I said, you do, you know if you're going to watch this film or not. So I'm not going to try and convert you. Me myself, it's my like I said, the only time I'll ever see an alien and a predator fight on screen. Until we get to the sequel. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews.